Hello, this will be um, a playlist of videos which demonstrate how we uh, set up, filled, and um, secured large sandbags for lakefront erosion control on Lake Superior. Lake Superior has very large waves. It's not uncommon for them to hit 25 feet in wintertime. Uh, so it's maybe similar to an ocean, but it's fresh water. And so uh, in 2014, September 11th, we were hit by a very large storm, which eroded a significant amount of the foredune of a piece of property that we have. So if we think of this dune as looking something like this, right? We've got our waves out here for the water. And uh, this would be land, kind of a cross-sectional view of the foredune, right? So this is land. We've got waves out here. Then the wave action comes up, eats away at the bottom of this little sand dune which had formed and um, takes away whatever's there. So uh, in discussing this with an erosion control expert named Jeff Cutsey, he uh, is the owner of GJ Site Solutions out of northern Michigan, um, he, you know, we pondered different things. You could put in sort of steel retaining walls, different kind of hard structures. But we had seen uh, a few soft structures of logs that we had tied back in various places and sort of felt guided that, that we might be able to secure something in place that, uh, that wouldn't be as, as uh, big a deal as putting in uh, sheet piling. As a result, um, he had seen a dam constructed out of large bulk shipping bags, okay? And they're about, think of them as almost four foot cubes. They're about 40 inches on a side and maybe 40 inches tall roughly. When they're filled out, they kind of bulk out to about 44 inches um, in sort of diameter. They sort of get round when they're filled. Uh, we decided to give that a try to approximate the large geotubes from companies like Tenkata, T-E-N-C-A-T-E. -E. So large geotubes can be used. It's a giant sand tube that you can lay um, in front of your property, um, but we weren't sure if the debris that we face um, in Lake Superior, there's a fair amount of debris where we are, and we weren't sure if it could tolerate that debris, so we decided to use these large sandbags in play, instead of that as an initial attempt. So what we did, let me draw the sandbag in red. Think of placing a sandbag here. Then the question is, this is about, you know, four by four by four, you know, a little smaller than that. That's a lot of sand, three to 3,500, maybe 4,000 pounds. How do you get the sand into it is the question, and how do you get it where you want it? And so the set of videos that will follow this one in this playlist um, will illustrate what we worked out as a method, okay? It is not going to work for everyone. Uh, it's simply what we have done as a way of trying to um, help this ourselves. So there's a couple of lifting loops at the top of each corner of this bag. Um, I've drawn it up above the ground here so I can draw what we call a scour mat. Okay, if you get a big geotube, typically there's a scour mat that's part of that. And the scour mat itself I'll draw in brown. In this case we used 8 ounce fabric, uh, non-woven. The heavy duty stuff from companies like Tenkata would be, it would be made out of 32 ounce woven. We used 8 ounce non-woven. Okay, and then at the end of this scour mat, this is a piece of fabric that goes underneath the bags, is a sand filled tube. And all we did was take the fabric, fold it over, and sew it, right? We did about, uh, oh, this was about two feet. So we used four feet of material. We took four feet, rolled it around, and it's a little over a foot in diameter, right? Um, so we used four feet of a 15 foot wide material, this is about three or four feet, okay, so let's just say three feet. This is four feet of material, okay, around that loop. And then the rest of the 15 feet we brought up and behind the bags. Then we fill that with sand to press the, the fabric against the back of the bags, okay? Then um, after doing, we place that scour mat first, okay? and then we set the bags on top of it. The purpose of that is to try to contain the sand underneath the bag. We put a few bags in at first, we actually pump the sand to them using a, slans, uh, a sand slurry, and we'll have a little more about that in these videos because we also use uh, pumps to pump this tube, this long tube full of sand um, uh, as well. 
so that we've got a tube out here and then as there's any erosion that tube kind of falls down into the erosion zone and tries to trap the sand. Because we used non-woven fabric instead of woven, we actually got some erosion right here through the fabric where the wave would come up, hit here, and the pressure would force the water through the fabric. It's non-woven, it's like a felt, okay? Um, probably would have been better if we had used a woven material, but that's in hindsight. So that's why we're sharing some of these uh, mistakes that we've made as well as what's worked. All right, so now we've got a bag here, okay? And we filled it with, um, we filled it with a small tractor, okay? Uh, we had reaccumulated enough sand that we were well above high water mark and were able to work on the beach with a little tractor. When it first happened and we didn't have that erosion, we actually used a pump, as I had said, just like we used here. We pumped the sand in from up behind the bluff about 200 feet away and pumped that sand water slurry into this until the, the sand, enough sand had accumulated to fill the bag. Those are really hard, firm bags, firmer than when we fill them dry. Um, but our, our bag is still a little bit, and it works, okay? Generally speaking, this works well. But we, we didn't just leave it there because we had some bags initially uh, get eroded away. And, and one storm moved a 4,000 pound sandbag. It was December of 2014 moved a bag probably six, seven feet in one night, okay? So what we do to prevent that, just like we've got this little scour tube and it can sort of fall down into the scour hole, is tie this back to an anchor up here on the bluff. So I'm gonna draw a little loop here and come down and draw an, an, an anchor. So these are ground anchors. It's essentially almost like a post hole digger, except that it, um, it stays in the ground and it's just got one helical flight here, okay? So, and at the top there's a loop. This is a half inch steel rod. And then uh, one other little tip, right next to it, you place a half round split piece of, of log, of wood, right? And our rope goes then off of here, down the bluff, and ties, we have to tie those loops together so that you don't peel the lifting straps off tie them together and then tie it up uh, to that anchor point up there. Now if our bag gets eroded, if any of the soil gets eroded underneath the bag, it will, it can go down but it can't go out, right? Which would take it away. Okay, we're almost done. There's one last thing we did. Each time we placed a bag, okay, we worked uh, rope also from this bag to the one behind it to the one in front of it so that you, we would tie about four bags together and then tie the last bag of that one to three more and then tie the last bag of that three to three more okay and that way we chained all the bags together so a bag can't one bag can't kind of slip out and open a gap in in this fence you might say we used we ended up using about a hundred bags in our project okay um, and they're all tied together from one end to the other as a result, uh, the bags start to approximate a geotube, so this would be a lower cost alternative to a more robust solution, which would be a heavy duty geotube from Tenkata. Now, um, we'll go into how to pump sand, we're going to go into how to dry fill, and how to support these bags. You can't just kind of hold the bag and dump sand into it, the bags have to be supported while they're being filled, alright, and so we'll illustrate um, the kind of tips and tricks for how to fill these large sandbags. Um, the last little piece I'll mention here, which is that we have a lot of debris and our bags were punctured. Um, and I, if we had bought a geotube, it also would have been punctured. Um, there's no doubt about it. There's a place which had used um, cedar logs with rebar driven through it as a means of sort of hard armor protection as that slowly gets eroded away and destroyed, the, the shoreline by us is sort of littered with these logs full of nails and rebar. As a result, about a quarter of our bags ended up with punctures um, in one year. And so if you get a puncture, then the sand can leak out and the bag will deflate. Um, it's polypropylene material, it's heavy, it's a woven material, these bags are. Uh, very few things will stick to that or glue to it. We're trying to patch them and figure what can we do. We, instead of trying to like hand sew those up, what we ended up doing was find, um, testing some tape that we had used for repairing roofs called Eternabond, E-T-E-R-N-A-B-O-N-D, Eternabond tape. 
and Eterna Bond tape, as it turns out, will stick pretty well to, this, to these woven polypropylene bags. And we were able to repair all of our bags, all 25 or so of them that had punctures or tears, in a matter of a couple of hours. Um, so, so what's our solution? Big bags, scour mat, tie back to anchors on the bluff. We did a few where we tied them back this way to anchors here. Okay, sorry, put a loop here, an anchor here. But that's a little less secure of a method than um, going up to the top because there would require more erosion. If we had a partial failure, this would fail very early because it's right behind the bag. Up here, a lot more sand would have to erode away before we would lose our anchor point. And I drew this kind of loose, but it's really, it's really, you know, you try to get this tight, right? Try to get this tight so that the bag doesn't fall out if it starts to get undermined out here. Last little tip, I don't know if it would have worked, but um, possibly would have tried to tip these bags down sideways, okay, if we had had like a big um, skid steer or something where we might have been able to tip them over. That might have been interesting to have the bags laying on their, on their sides instead of standing up a little bit vertically. Um, and if you've listened this far, you've probably got an erosion problem. So the videos that are going to follow will be a playlist of kind of the, the steps and methods of how to use a sand hopper that we built and things like that to, to get these bags filled quickly and efficiently um, and how to pump sand in order to pump fill this pump this sand tube or possibly to pump these bags full of sand if you can't get um, machinery to fill them in place right there okay okay last bit here we'll be uh, looking at the various uh, pieces that we use to put this together and so the ground anchors here were uh, 30 to 48 inches in height the rod is a half inch diameter uh, rod there and then there's a helical flight at the bottom which would be between four to six inches in uh, diameter there okay so that's what we used our pull tests we estimate from sand would have probably supported around um, a, a vertical pull in that case of around four six thousand four to six thousand pounds it really depends on the soil right loose soils they'll come out um, we were going through a couple layers of gravel, so they were pretty heavy for us. The rope is half inch double braided nylon, um, double braided, um, double braided nylon from Uline.com was the best price we found. We got it in 600 foot rolls and um, used about a mile of it. The bags come from Global Pack, G L O B A L P A K.com. There might be a hyphen in there. Um, but if you Google Global Pack uh, bulk shipping bags, you'll get the right folks. They took very good care of us and got us bags in a hurry when we needed it. The fabric that we used here was 8 ounce non-woven. And um, it's not the best stuff, I'm sure. But uh, that's what we used was 8 ounce non-woven. I think a woven material would be better, but it might create more pressure um, if there's a buildup of soil and water behind it. Um, and then that was sewn with, uh, from an, an upholstery company, sewed the material back into us um, to create that, that tube. Uh, so those are the, the elements uh, that's needed. If you're going to pump sand, then you need three things. You need a tank, and the bag can be a tank right, itself. If you set up the bag and support it, it can be a temporary water tank. Um, so if you're going to pump sand, you've got to have um, a semi-trash pump filling the bag and then a full trash pump pumping the sand slurry solution okay um, so we'll cover that a little bit when we show how to fill the bags uh, sorry how to fill the the geo the, the anchor tube on the scour mat with sand okay wish you luck on your project